Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We have two integrals, a single integral and a double integral. Let's start with this one. We have integral x from 0 to 1 log cosine by x over 2 over x times x plus 1. We do partial fractions. 1 over x times x plus 1 is equal to 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 1. We split into two integrals. In the first integral, we write cosine by x over 2 as sine pi x over 2 sine by x over 2. Sine by x is equal to sine 2 by x over 2. This is 2 sine by x over 2 cosine by x over 2. In the other integral, we write down cosine by x over 2 as sine by over 2 times x plus 1. Because this is sine by x over 2 plus pi over 2, which is equal to cosine by x over 2. In this integral, if we do the substitution, y equal to x plus 1. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 2. We have log sine by y over 2 divided by y. Here is the integral written using the dummy variable of integration x. What about the other integral? We take this ratio and modify it further. We write sine pi x over pi x all over sine pi x over 2 over pi x over 2. We split this integral into two integrals. This one is left intact. In this one, let's do the change of variables y equal to 2x. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 2. dy is 2 dx. So dx over x is dy over y. The integrand becomes log sine pi y over 2 over pi y over 2. Here is the integral using variable x. Now let's compare these two integrals. The exact same integrand. One integral is from 0 to 2. The other is from 0 to 1, which means that the difference between these two integrals is the integral of the same function of x from 1 to 2. But we already have an integral from 1 to 2. The integrand is 1 over x log sine pi x over 2. So we can actually get full cancellation if we divide by pi x over 2. To compensate for this, we have this new integral minus integral x from 1 to 2, 1 over x log pi x over 2. These two integrals together cancel this one here. Integral x from 0 to 1 log cosine by x over 2 over x times x plus 1 is equal to minus integral x from 1 to 2 log by x over 2 over x. The antiderivative of this function, taking the minus sign into account, is minus 1 half log by x over 2 all squared. Using the limits of integration, we get 1 half between brackets the square of log by over 2 minus the square of log by. That's a difference between two squares. We have one half log by over two plus log by. So this is log by squared over two. The other bracket contains log by over two minus log by. That's log one half, which is equal to minus log two. Our integral of interest is minus one half log two log by squared over two. The double integral here is x from zero to one, y from zero to one, log x y plus one over x y minus one. The first step is to reduce this double integral into a single integral, exploiting the fact that the integrand is a function of the product x, y. In a previous video, we derived that if we have a function g of x, y that depends only on the product, so if g of x and y is h of the product x, y, the double integral, where each variable varies from 0 to 1, is minus integral x from 0 to 1, h of x times log x. When we apply this result, we get that omega is equal to minus integral from 0 to 1 log x. Then we take this integrand, replace x, y by x. We have log x plus 1 in the numerator. In the denominator, we have x minus 1 dx. This minus can be used to write the denominator as 1 minus x. This is omega expressed as a single integral. Let's prepare the ground for manipulating omega. We have integral x from 0 to 1, x to the a, log x to the b. The real parts of a and b exceed minus 1. Let's do the substitution. x equal to e to the minus w over a plus 1. When x tends to 0 from above, w tends to plus infinity. When x is equal to 1, w is equal to 0. dx is minus the exponential over 1 plus a dw. The minus sign can be used to make our integral from 0 to infinity. Here is dx without the minus sign. This is x to the power a. Log x is minus w over a plus 1. This term is raised to the power b minus 1 to the b, a plus 1 to the b, and this a plus 1 can be taken outside the integral. We are left with this integral here, which is gamma of b plus 1.
we now make use of this result to obtain the following integrals. Integral x from 0 to 1 log x over 1 plus x. We write 1 over 1 plus x as summation g from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the j x to the j. Then we integrate term by term. We get this integral here. The power of the logarithm is 1. So in the numerator, we get minus gamma of 2. Gamma of 2 is 1 factorial. So in the numerator, we have minus 1. In the denominator, because we have j here, we get j plus 1 squared. The result is summation g from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the j over j plus 1 squared. If we don't have minus 1 to the power g, then we have zeta of 2. Because we have minus 1 to the power g, the terms corresponding to the positive even integers come with a minus sign. So we need to subtract double the sum of the reciprocals of the squares of the positive even integers. And this is one fourth of zeta of 2. This is one half of zeta of 2. We have this extra minus sign. So we have minus one half zeta of 2. That's minus pi squared over 12. The integral x from 0 to 1 log x over 1 minus x is dealt with in a similar way. Here, the expansion is summation g from 0 to infinity x to the j. The integral is exactly like here. Now, we don't have minus 1 to the power g. Thus, our result is minus zeta of 2, which is minus pi squared over 6. What if we have the integral from 0 to 1 log x log 1 minus x over x? We also use a series representation applied to this log 1 minus x. Log 1 minus x is minus summation g from 1 to infinity x to the g divided by g. We do integration term by term. x to the g divided by this x gives us x to the g minus 1. We have to evaluate this integral. b is equal to 1. So in the numerator, we get minus 1. In the denominator, we get g minus 1 plus 1. That's g squared. And there is a 1 over g here. We have 2 minus 1s from the evaluation of the integral and from the series representation of log 1 minus x. We end up with summation g from 1 to infinity, 1 over g cubed. And this is zeta of 3. Let's go back to big omega, which is this integral here. Let's rewrite big omega as integral from 0 to 1, log 1 plus x, d, the integral from 0 to x, log u over 1 minus u, du. Note that this quantity here, by using differentiation under the integral sign, is log x over 1 minus x, this part of the integrand. The next step is to do integration by parts. We have the product of log 1 plus x times the integral from 0 to x, log u over 1 minus u, du. If x is 0, we have 0. If x is equal to 1, we get log 2 times the integral u from 0 to 1, log u over 1 minus u. We have another term, which is minus the integral from 0 to 1. Then we have this guy. Then we have the derivative of this function, which is 1 over 1 plus x. Note that this integral is already evaluated in step 4 and is equal to minus pi squared over 6. This part here is minus pi squared log 2 over 6. Then we have the double integral. In the double integral, let's do the change of variables u equal to x, y. We want to replace u by y. When u is 0, y is 0. When u is equal to x, y is equal to 1. Log u becomes log x, y. 1 minus u is 1 minus x, y. We have 1 over 1 plus x. du is x, dy. This is the integrand. Log x, y can be written as log x plus log y. This allows us to split the integral into two integrals. In the first one, we have integral x from 0 to 1, y from 0 to 1, x log x over 1 plus x. We also have 1 over 1 minus x, y. The other guy is integral x from 0 to 1, y from 0 to 1, x log y over 1 plus x. In the denominator, we have 1 minus x, y. In the first integral, let's interchange the order of integration. In the second integral, we rename x as y and y as x. The integrand becomes y log x over 1 plus y, 1 minus x, y. We can recombine the two integrals. We have log x here and there. We have 1 minus x, y here and there. Let's take these two guys as a common factor. We have x over 1 plus x. And from here, we have y over 1 plus y. The next step is to add 1 and subtract 1. Let's combine these three terms. In the denominator, we have 1 plus x times 1 plus y. In the numerator, we have x times 1 plus y. That's x plus x, y. Plus y times 1 plus x. This is y plus x, y. Then we have minus the product of these two brackets. Minus 1, minus x, minus y, minus x, y. We have x, y with a plus sign and x, y with a minus sign. These go away. We have x and minus x. We have y and minus y. We end up with x, y minus 1 which can be written as minus 1 minus x, y. Downstairs, we still have 1 plus x times 1 plus y. This bracket can be written as 1 minus 1 minus x, y over 1 plus x times 1 plus y. 
we can split our double integral again into two double integrals. In one of them, the integrand is log x over 1 minus xy times 1. And there is a minus sign here. The other double integral has log x over 1 plus x, 1 plus y, because this 1 minus xy and that one go away. In each double integral, we do the integration first with respect to y. The antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus y is log 1 plus y. When we use the limits of integration, we get log 2. The remaining single integral has the integrand log x over 1 plus x. That was evaluated in the third step and is equal to minus pi squared over 12. Let's go back here. Integrating first with respect to y, the antiderivative is minus 1 over x log 1 minus xy. Using the limits of integration, if y is 0, we have log 1, which is 0. If y is 1, we get log 1 minus x. Minus 1 times minus 1. We have a plus sign here and integral x from 0 to 1, log x, log 1 minus x over x. That was in step 5. This integral is zeta of 3. Combining all our results, our double integral is zeta of 3 minus pi squared log 2 over 4.